So today is something that I've never done before. I'm going to give a lecture through my computer and the telephone to the National Academy of Sciences in the United States. The reason I'm doing this is because people have seen our periodic videos. They're having a conference in the United States about how to take chemistry to the public. They think our project is really interesting and they want to know how we do it. So I'm here with Brady. I'm going to give a talk and then the two of us are going to answer questions via the telephone. Let's see if it works. So I'm now dialing in on the computer. Your conference will begin very shortly. Please continue to hold the line. In the rehearsal, I didn't, I got on the computer, but I didn't know the phone number. So eventually I had to type a message saying help and show it on my screen. And they called me. Good morning, everybody. Can you see my screen? My name's Martin Polyakov, and I'm here in my office with my video journalist collaborator, Brady Harron, who will be available to answer questions later, and who at the moment is videoing what's happening at my end. So if it's exciting, you may see it on YouTube later today or tomorrow. And these are the other members of our team whose wishes are with you but um, are not in my office because you wouldn't understand anything if they did, all spoke at once. As um, Sharon said in the introduction, my interest in research is in green chemistry, cleaner approaches for making chemicals and materials, and my particular area of interest is cleaner solvents. And through this, I have done a lot of research in the area of supercritical fluids highly compressed carbon dioxide, highly compressed steam, which can be used as solvents for reactions. And as a result of this, um, our demonstrations of supercritical fluids were recorded by um, Brady Harron on his um, YouTube channel that he began for the university called Test Tube here. And this is me demonstrating supercritical fluids. This video has now been watched by nearly 50,000 people. And as a result of this, Brady and I really got on well together. And Brady had the idea that we should make a periodic table of videos. This is a website where every um, element has its own video. I told him he was completely mad. And what would we say about elements like the ones down here? which only a few atoms have been made or never been made at all. And after some discussion, he persuaded me it would be a good idea. If you click on one of these videos, uh, buttons, as you saw in the video, you get a, a short clip hosted on YouTube. This is our first hydrogen video. Three, two, one. So the, the main facts were that we began filming on June the 9th, um, 2008, and we recorded the first 36 elements, or my part of the first 36 elements, in two hours in my office. And the website was completed on the 17th of July, just under six weeks. So the current state is, or rather it was on, um, we've had at least 11 million hits, and this number is now really um, not very clear, because how do you count a class of school children that have all watched at once. And the number of hits on YouTube for hydrogen is now over 281,000. And these are some of the countries that it has been watched in. I've highlighted, obviously, the United Kingdom, where um, Nottingham is. I hope you all realize Nottingham is in the UK. And then I've highlighted Malaysia and China, where my university has campuses, and also Ethiopia, where we have a very strong collaboration. And we've had lots of comments on uh, YouTube. The, the first one here, awesome vids. I wish I'd found them before I did my science GCSE exam. GCSE is six, school exam, high school exam for 16-year-olds. Of course, you can't tell whether this is from a 16-year-old or from somebody in their 40s who is um, bewailing his misspent youth. 
And then I love your videos, just watching these videos, I've learnt more than a full term at college. And videos like these is what makes me interested in school and better improving myself. Thank you. Then there are more stayed messages. This one is from Radley College, which is a high school in Abingdon, which is near Oxford. The periodic table of videos that have now become an essential opening to any lesson with a chemistry set that I teach. Set means class, not a sort of set of test tubes. Um, and then thanks again for developing such a wonderful teaching aid that has already inspired great interest in chemistry. Brady, who's quite an internet freak, managed to download all the comments to all our videos about two weeks ago and analyze the words. And these are the top 100 words in frequency. So you can see there's chemistry and element and love, which is quite encouraging. Then perhaps more strangely, professor and hair. You have seen me all on the video. Which, um, but they're things like uranium and so on. So it's quite a sort of encouraging and warm thing. And also things like awesome, cool, which are, and interesting, which are not words that are normally associated with chemistry. Sort of nasty, toxic and so on don't appear at all. Here are some of the early press um, cuttings. BBC Turkish Service, uh, Russian Business Magazine. This is Chemical and Engineering News. I can't remember this one. The Mail Online, the Daily Mail, is a sort of middle right-wing newspaper in the UK. This comes from an Israeli um, business magazine. It took me a long time to have this translated. But it's, the, the key line in here says, he looks as if he went to the barber and said, give me an Einstein and make it look wild. For all his celebrated work as a research chemist and university professor, Martin Polyakov didn't become a celebrity till he got on the internet. As the MC of an online version of the periodic table of elements illustrated with experiments performed by his colleagues at the University of Nottingham, of encyclopedic knowledge of what happens in the test tube has made him a sensation on YouTube. So what we have done is as well as doing um, videos about the elements, updating them, we've had videos gold, silver and bronze. If any of you are not chemists, bronze is not an element, which was for the Olympic Games when the Large Hadron Collider leaked helium and closed down, we made a video to explain why. When the Nobel Prize in 2008, we had nearly 40,000 hits in one week um, describing what the prize was about. This was more than the official Nobel Prize video got for that week. And then we did Candles at Halloween, which was extremely successful, and a whole series of other ones. It's nice sunny weather in Stockholm. I don't know what to think about this. Um, I'm getting the feeling that our car might be covered in snow. It may take a while to, to find our car. So we're in Addis Ababa University in the science faculty. Out at Kilo. And it's like 23 degrees. It's nice and pleasant. We have now done a whole series of road trips. This is a road trip I made to um, Darmstadt, where they discovered elements, and I'm in the control room where element 111 was discovered. We have put subtitles on the videos. Here's subtitles in English um, and two in Spanish. We have got over 100 um, videos that have been subtitled in Portuguese. We now have some in Turkish, even in Indonesian. Brady went on holiday to New York and as a side trip went to visit um, a school in Pittsford in upstate New York, Barker Road Middle School, where the teacher, um, <coughs> Bob Browntree, had um, e emailed me. And um, I'm actually wearing the tie that he gave me, sent me through the internet. Uh, well, not through the internet, but sent me by post. And so Brady videoed the children at the school watching a video that I'd made. He also videoed the children asking me questions. This young girl has got a model and is asking me whether she should call the element aluminum or aluminium. Is it aluminum or aluminium? Because I want to know what to call my aluminium model. <laughs> and then I was videoed 
answering these questions. And both of these, in fact, I, we had two videos that were put out with me answering the school kids' questions. Hi, it's a great model, and you should call it aluminium. We have collaborated with the Broadway Cinema, which is the leading private uh, um, independent cinema in our town. And in November 2008, they showed a video on the small screens, the screens that people watch in the foyer and when they're queuing for tickets and things like that. And then in May last year, we did a live performance in the cinema. Think about this, doing chemical demonstrations in a carpeted room with no chemical facilities. And here's Sam Tang demonstrating dry ice on the stage at the Broadway cinema. And here's me watching a video of myself. It's pretty unnerving to see your head of 10 feet high on the screen. And it, w it was really quite successful. And we're going to do a similar performance at the European Science Festival ESOF in Turin in July. We've also been in exhibitions. This is the university's pavilion at the Shanghai Expo running at the moment. And here you can see somebody, and this is a real picture, it's not posed, this is not a model, watching the periodic videos in China. So here is our team. You can see um, this is Brady, Sam Tang, Steve Little, who's an expert in lanthanide elements and uranium, Pete License, who does most of the demonstrations and you saw on the video, um, Debbie Kays, who has gone on screen to say that she loves boron, and Neil um, Barnes, who is our long-suffering um, technician. Neil rarely says anything on screen, but has become a real cult figure on the internet. And there's me with my periodic table um, umbrella. We have had a display put in the C Catalyst Discovery Centre in Widnes, which is in the northeast of England, one of the very few museums in England devoted to chemistry. Here is their display, a bit bigger here. And it's really quite popular. I've met people who've said, my children saw your display in the museum. And um, so again, we're using a different way of distributing this. And I've had a mad idea, which I perhaps would like to put to the audience. Perhaps somebody can help me is that I think that these videos would be great for in-flight entertainment on a DVD on the aeroplane. Imagine there are people sitting there with their little screens feeling really bored, and so they can watch clips which are quite short. The longest one is 10 minutes and the others are rather shorter. And they're the sort of thing that they can nudge their neighbor and say, have you seen this one, and so on. So I think this is a real captive audience to which the message of chemistry can be taken. And the final thing I'd like to end up with a quote from this um, YouTube subscriber here, who is a single mother who wrote, my 11 year old science geek son adores your videos. When I picked him up from school this afternoon, I had the pleasure of telling him breaking news in the world of chemistry. He immediately burst out loudly and excited. There's a new periodic video. Thanks to you all. He was mercifully quick and uncomplaining about his homework tonight. He's often otherwise, sigh, so he could get to watch the new videos before time for church. And so at this point, I say that I've enjoyed presenting to you. Please um, ask lots of questions.